he he might say that he doing this for fun or he you know but I know that it it, it means something to him because he is a hip hopper. Brian, I'm gonna lie to you. I would probably have to get on a phone call with Katie, like, bro, stop telling me you do this for fun, bro. <laughs> you on a track with me, bro. You making right, right. me look bad. <laughs> Tell me you do this for fun. Like, this no, ain't no but, play, but that's why, you know, again, you know, I, I say this, like, one of my thing is when I create music and I do a collaboration, I want it to be a great song. I want it to be a great record. I don't care who it is. Mm. So I, I picked that record and that vibe because I wanted it to be a record. Mm. That's a song. It's a great hook. Great bars by me and him. But it wasn't like I was going to send him something like, oh, I'm about to send him this and I'm going to out-rap him. Mm -hmm. Like, you know what I'm saying? Because it's like, like you said, he's not a rapper. I I just want to do whatever it takes to make a great record, and that's what we accomplished. Mm -hmm. And I'm so happy that the feedback has been so positive and that everybody's been tapped in and listening. I see a lot of people making highlight mixtapes to it. Like All you kids out there, scared money. I want to see all little high school mixtapes, you know what I'm saying? I want the the... the, the the videos y'all send into these colleges, put that scared money on there, put it on Instagram so we can repost it. Mm. But I, I love seeing that, though. I've been seeing that on Instagram and TikTok. Um, I, I just love the reception that he's been getting from other athletes, from artists, from just the people in general. You know, it, it's just dope to see. It's and I think that is the, it's the speaking of the awards, that's collaboration of the year. Ain't nobody make no that. I, I don't know who can top it. And ain't nobody made that much noise. I know we only in March, but ain't nobody made that much noise in hip hop all year or in the last six months. Yo, this video is sponsored by Los Hermanos. And it's crazy because I always wanted to have a uh, tequila sponsorship. So shout out to my guys over at Los Hermanos for taking a shot with me, doing this partnership thing. I really appreciate it. Listen, I like it so much, I might just be worse than uh, Rick Ross, bro. So if you see me on the gram, posting it all over my story and my gram, don't say nothing. Just go ahead and buy a bottle. I got it by the case. So look, we got the Blanco. We also got the Repo. And you know, my favorite is in Yeho, right? We got it on the way, you know. Like I said, we got it by the case, man. So listen, if you in Delaware, you in Georgia, you in Maryland, you in New York, you in Jersey, make sure you go to the nearest liquor store and ask for some Los Hermanos. Hey, my guys. Ah, man. Stiley is in the building, man. Yes. What up, brother? What's going on? Man, this is, uh, hey, why not? Just tell the people it's part two. Yeah. We, we doing it again. Right. Pause. Sheesh. Pause. I'm going crazy on that. Yeah. <laughs> Damn, but yeah, uh <laughs> the um the chemistry, the conversation was just good, bro. And um and I appreciate you for real, man. No, I appreciate I, you. Uh the, the 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 vibe, the energy is genuine. Yes. I feel like we hear this a lot, and I don't want to sound like beating a dead drum, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> a right. dead horse, but like it's we don't get that a lot in the industry. We don't, and that's why I wanted to make sure that we get this part two and we get it right, you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Even though it was right, but you yeah, know, it was. We, we make sure that it, we get everything and um, that we need to get and touch on all the conversations that we need to touch on because, like you said, it isn't... Um, I mean, I was telling you, like, yeah. it isn't, you know... It's rare when you find someone who does their research, who actually genuinely cares um, and has unique and thoughtful questions mm. you know what i'm saying um and allows someone like myself or anyone that comes and sits in this chair to have a voice and be able to speak no nah, man I, I appreciate you for pulling up again uh i thank you for entrusting me you know what i'm saying and just being open to like, every every question that has you answered yeah, <laughs> yeah. i appreciate that <laughs> it mean a lot i mean it, it's funny because people might not see how much that mean but it means a lot because everybody is not like that. Yeah. Right. Um, yeah. I'm just curious, man. Just from our conversation, we was breaking bread together, yep. eating this. Shit. Um, what does it mean to be a good person and and not just be a good person, but in the music industry? Man, I think it means everything because um, I, I was speaking to um, you know some followers the other night on live, mm -hmm. and I have a record called "Put Some Good In," mm -hmm. and I was telling them that like that is a record that is one of probably like the top three, definitely top five um, records from me because 
when I started making music, that was the goal, to put some good in. You know what I mean? Whenever I thought about being an artist, um, I know a lot of artists or athletes don't want to be um, a role model. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? They don't want that type of pressure on them. But when I thought about getting into the music industry and becoming an artist was to walk correctly in the light of God, first mm. of all, you know what I'm saying? Even though there's a debate in that too where people be like, oh, music is, you know, for me it's haram and, uh, you know, music isn't supposed to, you know, whatever. But at the end of the day, I try to be that beacon of light, mm. to be uh, a voice for the voiceless and for people who are like me, who um, are like-minded, have the same sensibilities, might have grew up in the same circumstances I have, or maybe I observed people that grew up in circumstances not like mine, but I just observed the circumstance and I'm able to speak on it and it touches other people. So being a good person is putting some good in, whether you're in the industry or not, just giving goodness to the world. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? But it's a sign Giving that, guidance. It's a giving sign that, that, that goes around is the good guy always finish last. And a lot of times we see people who aren't the best at being good people <laughs> in those moments, because I'm going to be fair to everybody. Yeah, Everybody has a moment, right? But we see people that aren't as good as being a good person in spurts and moments and times, and they rise fast. Yeah. So if... We come up and we see that constantly, and that's what's shown to us. Like the good guy finished last. What's my motivation to be a, put put some good in? The motivation should be you standing on business, like they say. You know mm. what I mean? You standing on your own um, morals, your own um, beliefs that you can do it your way. You don't have to be a follower. You don't mm. have to, um, I guess. You don't have to conform mm. to anybody's, you know, way of... Because even me as an artist, there's always someone telling me how to make music, how to act, how to even post on social media, how to be. There's always somebody, in, you know, telling you or thinking they can do what you do better, right? Mm. So you just got to believe and trust in yourself and know that what you feel and what you came here to do, whether it, in any aspect or any, um, any avenue of life, you know what I'm saying? Whatever you do in life, whether it's teacher, music, bus driver, whatever, you know what I'm saying? You just got to know that your way is the way and trust in that, you know what I mean? Have faith in that. Mm. We're going to talk about some things we already touched on, so mm -hmm. just let you know so I don't feel awkward. Nah. Before, <clears throat> last time we was talking about, we opened the show with like, uh, just talking about you being married. Mm -hmm. Something that you said, it hit home for me because it's something that I say a lot, and you was like, man... I really want to do the right thing under God. Yes. And um, I was like, that's something that I used to say a lot. Well, I, I, I've said a lot. And I could see how it could come off wrong to my wife because, of course, women want to hear, <laughs> I don't know, the fairy tale. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Because I really love you and, uh, you know, you're the best person I've met. And that could be true. Mm -hmm. But for men, that's not the reason we kind of propose. Right. And I was wondering, how do you convey that to your wife? Man, is that a conversation that you even have? I mean, it's part of the conversation for sure, because that is, you know, that's the goal. You know what I'm saying? To do things and to step in the light. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. To say, you know, walk in the right path. So that is definitely a conversation. And I feel like when you are equally yoked in that in that way and you have... Um, some the same beliefs or the same you know again mm -hmm. i'm gonna say sensibilities you know what i mean yeah. it, it's an easy conversation mm -hmm. also as men right we we the leaders of a fa of family like you have kids i have kids right so that's another thing like i want to make sure that if i ever leave this earth they're taken care of mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you you see that's a big part that people don't realize like if i wasn't married and then i leave this earth there's and I have a catalog of music, I have businesses, I have whatever I have in my name, it, who's, you know what I mean? I want that to be my wife, my children. I want to know that when I leave, it's taken care of and it's in the right hands. It's not in the lawyer's hands or in the label, you know, because you see those kind of arguments or, um, or those, those fights when it comes to people's estate or people's business, whatever it is that they own, 
So yeah, man, that's part of it. Um, definitely, you know, I feel like you're rewarded. You know, by God, when you're doing the things, by uh, God, by God, yeah, <laughs> no, exactly. It's crazy because I think, um, I think where I went wrong, where I was going wrong was, I think I wasn't adding. I don't want to say fluff. I'm, I'm trying to say it the right way, but just understanding the conversation, who I'm having the conversation with, right? Mm-hmm. Like, as a man, we can have these conversations and be like, man, I want my blessings from God. I'm doing it because, you know, it's the right thing to do. I want to make my wife happy and things like that. But that probably shouldn't be the conversation to have with my wife, right? right. right. <laughs> Especially in that way. Yeah. I think that's where I was going wrong because I definitely, I made it uh, uh, I made it known that, man, this is for God, right? Because for me, the reason why I'm here is because of the things you want to hear. But when we're talking specific, specifically for marriage, mm-hmm. my reason mm-hmm. is because of God. Is because I know it'll make you happy. That's my reason, mm-hmm, right? But mm-hmm. I know that's something that you probably don't want to hear, right? Right, right. But right. the re- if you ask me the right question, I guess, right? right? I mean, I guess men are like they say logical thinkers. If you ask me why are you still here, it's because I love you, right? Because you are the woman that I want to be with, mm-hmm. right? That's not necessarily the reason I'm marrying you, but I don't know. I guess just to have it, just knowing how to have the conversation. Yeah, and with. I think I said it before. It's like it feels like completion. Mm. You feel whole too. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? When you have that that better half, you know, that you know, there's many what the the rib or whatever, you know, whatever mm-hmm. people say. It's that, you know what I mean? You just it just feels like the right thing. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, I know we keep saying like doing the right thing under God, but it it feels like the right thing because it is the right thing. And obviously all of those things, because we are men. So if we're talking about loving someone, caring about someone, wanting to protect someone, wanting to make sure they are, um, they don't have no worries when it comes to uh, financial or being safe out in this world, that's obvious. Mm. Or it should be because through our actions, you know what I'm saying, or the mm. thing, how we carry ourselves and how we carry our our marriage and our family. No, in fact, I waited like six years to get married. I know some people said that was long. You was like 15. 15 years. <laughs> But you know, there's time. Like again, we humans. We so there was time apart. It wasn't a straight fifteen years. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Oh, but that's that's. I, I'm not gonna say it's natural, but it happens. But again, I would have did it the first day I met her. Yeah, and that's what I was about to say. Yeah. I feel like because I people sleep on this, man. I feel like um, it's hard to propose later because you. See, <laughs> You exposed to all the flaws in each other. Yeah, like we we both are flawed. <laughs> right. When you first meet somebody, it's like you're the best person I know. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, is, is that what is it called? The honeymoon stage. Yeah, the honeymoon right? stage. And it's easy to, to float away with the butterflies and flowers <laughs> and skies and, and, and you know what I'm saying? The flowers and things like that. Skip through the yeah. Yeah, it's easy to do that. But then as you get to know each other, it's like oh, I want to spend my entire life right. with you. But I was talking about this again with my wife. I was like, man, a lot of the problems that we're having in our relationship is because we're we're starting backwards. Mm-hmm. And I know this might not be a concept <laughs> you want to have, and we're gonna get into the music. But yeah, it's just, yeah, yeah. we're having a lot of these issues because I mean, we're talking. I know you you uh you Muslim, I'm Christian, but yes. a lot of the things still align. Mm-hmm. We're having sex before we married. Mm-hmm. We're we're doing a lot of things that we're not supposed to do, and we're wondering why we're having these problems. Mm-hmm. I feel like we, if we was to get married early, that would eliminate the breaks because now we have that commitment. Right, right? it's like you're not going nowhere. Mm-hmm. I'm not going nowhere. We, <laughs> yeah. we gotta, we, we gotta get this we got, right yeah, because yeah. we made this oath under God. Right, that's if you somebody that believe in God and, and yeah, and, yeah, and want to follow that. Mm-hmm. Way. I mean, and that's that's real and that's true because it's like it's a different type. It's a different type of commitment. It's it's a lot harder to walk out the door. It's easier when you're not committed or when you're not married. You're like, mm-hmm. all right, go do your thing. I'll do my thing, whatever. Like, you know, um, but like you said, it is harder to propose later on. It's harder to even come back after breakups or whatever the case may be. Because again, it's just, it, it leaves gaps. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? So you can easily fall into those um, those conversations or you can easily, you know, arguments or whatever it is, you can be, like you said, working backwards. Mm, no, in fact. Yo, do you think commitment is hard? I don't. I don't. Mm. I think, you know, when, when we was talking about earlier, like when we was, you you said something about... Um, the environment. Yes, the standard. environment. And mm-hmm. just like, 
I think that, you know, I would be lying if I would say, like, growing up a certain way or around certain, you know, having certain examples didn't influence me mm. to think that I needed or felt like I was moving a certain way. Of course, you know what I'm saying? Maturity plays a part in that, too. You know what I mean? Just not kind of, just not kind of knowing or being, sometimes you got to sit back and be um, direct with yourself mm. and to assure, like, this is what I'm doing. This is what I want to do. All the outside noise doesn't matter. I think sometimes we listen to much of the outside noise that can sway us different ways. Yeah, I will, I'm going to say, I'm be 100 with you. So I would say it's gotten easy, but mm -hmm. initially it was hard because of, again, we talk about that standard that the environment created. And I'm talking specifically for men. Mm -hmm. And it's like growing up, getting, having multiple women was, that was your badge of honor mm -hmm. coming up, right? Mm -hmm. and, and they said, uh, when I was a kid, I thought as a kid until I became an adult and I put it out my childish ways, right? Mm -hmm. I feel like coming up, that was my badge of honor for so long that when I got into a relationship, the easy thing was to be like, man, I don't got to do this. I'm going to just do my thing. Right. That was easy. Mm -hmm. I think the harder thing, that, but that's with anything. When we talk about commitment, that's with going to the gym. Mm -hmm. It's times where I don't feel like doing five miles. It's times where I, when I want to eat something unhealthy. It's times where I want to do the wrong thing. Mm -hmm. And I feel like doing the right thing can get hard at times. Of course. I, I've definitely... No, of course. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, just even... I mean... Staying on your dean, you know what I'm saying? Like Facts. that can it's hard. You mm. know what's right, but it's hard to stay on that path sometimes. But we're human, you know what I'm saying? Mm. Um what helps you continue to 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 I guess do the right thing or, or, or do what's right even though it get hard? What helps you do that? Um I definitely think that, you know, a lot of it is just uh, you know, religion, you know what I mean? Just being tired, you know, trying to um remind myself anytime I think you know, and that, and it's not even in a relationship or anything, but just any time I think negative in life, you mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? Like, I've been through a lot, um, even, like, past few years, just battling, just stay, trying to stay mentally healthy. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? So I try to make sure that I keep, you know, my foot on the pedal, <laughs> you know what I'm saying, and I stay on path of what I came to do. You know what I mean? And that's just provide for my family, make sure that everybody around me is good, create amazing music, you know what I mean? Mm. Give it to the, the to the people who love and support me and um you know, and then again, do everything right in the eyes of God. It's crazy how we talking from like two different perspectives, two different religions but still got that one commonality of God. And it's crazy because like I was talking about People, it's so easy for people to do the wrong thing because they don't understand the value of God, mm -hmm. right? And that, like that's basically what you're saying. So when, for me again, I'm, I was talking about the relationship thing. Right. When it's when it do get hard, when mm -hmm. the going do gets tough, it's like no, I understand the value of where I'm trying to get. To. <laughs> exactly. Same with working out. Same with like whatever. It's like I know the value in staying in shape, mm -hmm. and I know if I don't, what it can cost me. Mm -hmm. Is this worth my life? Same with your relationship. Like, mm -hmm. if you really believe in God, like, is this worth my life, my soul? <laughs> right? Like, like, so it's like we can play with it. I, I'm just saying we want a real conversation. Yeah, yeah. We can play with it if you want. Right. But it's like, bro, what what are you what are you willing to risk for? Right. So it's like, yeah, like, okay, cool. And I'm just talking to my my homie, my young guys out there, like, yeah, you wanna go fuck off or whatever. Right. Is it worth your soul? Exactly. If you're married, right? Like, right. you know what I'm saying? Like, and for me, nah. Even if you were in a committed relationship or trying to be in a committed relationship, is it worth it? No. No. Because, yeah. bro. Really? If you want to be real, bro. <laughs> figuratively, we're all the same. Yeah. And I'm like... I talk to my home like when I'm going through things with my girl, my wife, my wife. I call my homie right, and I might vent, and guess what they say? 
bro, mine the same, bro. They do the same thing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And I'm like, <laughs> okay. They showed me that. All right, so are you think you going? Are you going to leave her because you think the grass is green? It's going to be the same thing. It's the yeah. same issue. Same with men. Right. Like I'm pretty sure you're about to have conversation with our, with our other friends. Yeah. And they're like, I hate when he he just don't do this. And I'm probably do the same thing. Yeah. <laughs> like, I'm probably a little messy. I'm probably like, bro, right. it's the same <laughs> shit as you complain about. Like you going you going to leave just to go through the same. It's just like, yeah. bro. You you win in the end by staying with somebody that can that's going to really love you because you might not see it right now. Right. Oh, we having a crazy conversation. <laughs> but what happened is, don't wait when it's too late. Yeah. <laughs> when you can't get up. Right. When you can't take care of your own self. Yeah. When you can't use the bathroom. When you. Oh my <laughs> yeah. gosh, bro. Yeah. And I know, like, it might be, it might be easier. Like, what up, dog? It, 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 like it. <laughs> People take it for granted because you can pick up a glass. <laughs> yeah. People take it for granted because you can go to the bathroom and wipe yourself. It. Right. People take that for granted. Mm -hmm. But what happened is in those moments when you can't do that on your own, it's going to show by how everybody you encounter and how you treated those yeah. people. Yeah. Whew. Oh, my God. And I mean, and just being real, like, I mean, we've, like, again, we're human. So, I mean, we've all been hurt, hurt people. You know what I mean? And how long do you want to do that, too? Mm. You know what I'm saying? Mm. So How you, you want to be remembered, right? Yeah, man, that's crazy. That's 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 exactly right. Like, <sighs> how do you want to be remembered? This might be better than last time. Yo, this episode is sponsored by Manscaped. Listen, if your lady's on go, but your meat got a fro. <laughs> Yo, this episode is sponsored by Manscaped. Listen, don't use the clippers you use on your face on the head below your waist. <laughs> Yo, this episode is sponsored by Manscaped. Listen, fellas. You want that jumper like Steph Curry? But your nuts is fairy? <laughs> but now nah, this episode is sponsored by Manscaped. Manscaped.com. Use promo code JHill for 20% off. They're going to give you a, the, the man bag. You know what I'm saying? When you're traveling, put all your grooming needs in the man bag. You don't got to carry it in your book bag. You don't got to be all over the place. You feel what I'm saying? They got the nose trimmer. Listen, man. Some of y'all know it's disgusting out here. Get you a nose trimmer. For real. This shit is disgusting. Some ball deodorant for when you out and about. You about to get it on. Put that ball deodorant on. Smell fresh. Brand new. And of course, the lawnmower 5. Make sure you holler at my guys at Manscaped. J-Hill promo code. J-Hill, one word. 20% off and free chipping. Yeah. <laughs> Let's get into the music, bro. We ain't yeah. even, we ain't even getting into no, it. Yeah, yeah. Yo, okay. Yo, let me ask you this. Because you from Ohio. Yep. Uh... Is what was the exact city? Yeah, Maslin. Maslin, Ohio. Yes. Small time city. Small, small town. Small city. And you take pride in being I from Maslin, right? I do. I don't know where Maslin is. <laughs> yeah. Like, it's, where is this? <laughs> it's oh. Tiger Town, but it's Ohio. So um it's northeastern Ohio, but it's next to, you know where Canton is, the football hall of fame? You heard, I heard of, Canton? of Canton? Yeah, I heard so of Canton. So it's right next to Canton. Okay. And it's like so I I try to explain it. I like if geographically or like on the, I think it's like you will go Maslin, Canton, Akron, Cleveland. Okay. Like that. Okay. Kind of like, or maybe it's Maslin, Canton, Akron, Cleveland. So, what, something like that. I'm if pretty sure. If y'all know, y'all can, you I know. Well, I'm pretty sure people in Maslin care to know about <laughs> yeah, that. Yeah, exactly. That's it. Well, I, we don't even care. Right, 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 right. So I'm right. No, no, no. Fact, I'm messing, I'm messing. I, Yo, I feel so, you. <laughs> but you moved to New York, right? Yes. You yes. had hoop dreams. Yes. And I was curious. I didn't get a chance to ask you this. How much of an impact on your music career you think New York had to how you make music and your style of music compared to Ohio? Man, um, I think it's both kind of equal because I feel like even before I moved to New York, New York had an impact on me musically. When it comes to hip hop, that's fair. You know what I'm saying? When it comes to hip hop, that's because fair. I was. You know, still very heavy on um, the Nas's, the Wu-Tang's, the J's, the Biggie's, the, you know, everybody that comes with that. You know, that's growing up. Um, so heavy influence there, um, but also the Midwest, you know what I mean? Like being from Ohio, um, Bone Thugs and Harmony. Mm -hmm. um, also, not even outside of music, um, <clears throat> excuse me. You got the OJs, you got the Isley Brothers, you got Bootsy Collins, you got all, you know, this funk music, this soul music, this R&B music, Levert, you know, guys like. So, again, that's why, I, you know, if you listen to my production, it's, it's very musical, it's very, it's kind of soul sample-y, 
<laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'm not a producer, but that's what I always gravitated towards with my ear. Um, the storytelling part comes from that as well. Um, but also, you know, the South is heavy influences too, like, you know, Scarface and people like that. Okay, so let me ask you this then. So you go you go to New York to play basketball. Yeah. You get hurt. You went yeah. to... L.I.U. L.I.U. Yeah. You get hurt. Where did... Were you rapping in Ohio? Like, where did where did you want to do music come from? So, um, growing up, I always like kind of wrote raps, right, mm -hmm. in a, in a notebook. I never record. I, well, I ain't gonna say I never, but I re I recorded a few times. Like, we had my homie Ad May rest in peace. Like, he had a home studio. You know, I would go down there and record here and there. Um, and you know, they used to make beats and stuff too. So, rapping over their beats, sometimes rapping over instrumentals whatever, you know, so it's always been there, but it wasn't until I got to New York and um, it, it was a, it was after school, it was after the hoop dreams, you know, I was just kind of trying to make my way and find my way through New York, um, working any job that I could just to stay in New York. Um, I was sleeping on couches, sleeping with friends, you know, a, lot, a couple of my friends and their parents, like, let me stay. Um, Before you continue, I'm sorry. Yeah. I'm curious, why why did you make it your priority to stay in New York? Why not just go back home? Because it wasn't nothing in Maslin. You know what I'm saying? Like you said, I mean, it's a sm you don't know where it's at. But it's just a, it was a, it's a small town. It wasn't a lot. I just knew going back there, it wouldn't be a lot of opportunity. Okay. So it was, like, very important for me to stay in New York. And I sacrificed a lot. Like, I was literally, like, homeless. Like, you know what I'm saying? But it was whatever I had to do to stay in New York because I didn't know it was music, but I knew it was something there for me that could better my life. You know what I'm saying? If that makes sense. So you knew that? I knew. I just had that feeling. Because we both believe in God, though, what was the prayer answer to show you that it was music, though? It was just, you know, so I would be... So how it started is, like, I would always rap, you know, like, starting at LIU, you know, um, people would come and get me when they were ciphering, you know what I'm saying? Like, um, me and my roommate at the time, we actually started, like, an open mic um, night at the on the campus in, in the um, cafeteria. They let us get the cafeteria, and we would do, I think we did it once a month, mm -hmm. which was a big hit. Everybody would come out. We let everybody come sing, do poetry, uh, rap, whatever it was. You so know was like I mean? the Host, the but MC I was almost. the MC, yeah. Okay, me and okay. my me and my uh, roommate at the time, John P. Shout out to him if he's watching. Um, but he, we would host it, and we would get like the talent to come out and kind of let everybody come and showcase their talents or whatever. So, you know, with that, I had fun with that. Again, I would grab the mic. We would rap here and there. He he would also rap, so we would rap here and there. Make a longer story short. Years later, I started working in retail. Uh, streetwear. I had a homie, my man Dice. Um, we he used to work at a store called Prohibit, mm -hmm. and then we had my dude Kensei, who ran Prohibit from Japan. He's he's a Japanese um, guy. Uh, ran the store from Japan, and he had like thirty dudes. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like they was all um, Japanese. I, I believe they were all all from Japan, like originally, but came there. Whether they was like exchange students, whatever. Was skateboard with those guys, hang out with those guys in the store. Come to find out, Kensei makes beats. They know I rap. They got me in the studio. And that's really what kicked it off. Because after that, I played the CD in the store, and then Most Def walked in the store. He heard it. He asked for the CD. I gave it to him. He liked the music, told me I had talent. At the time, Most is somebody that you know I admired or looked up to. So I was like, oh, it's a go. I got something here. So wait, 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 wait. Don't just skip past that. How did that happen? <laughs> like, what, what, wait. Tell me the whole story. How, how did that happen? He just gave him your tape. No, I gave him it. You so gave yeah. So when we when we're um so anyways, like I said, we used to skateboard. So the store was on Elizabeth and Mott, like in Soho. So we would always meet there and go from there and skate up to Union Square every night, and mm -hmm. then we would just skate. Like for hours and hours after the store usually closed about seven o'clock, so we would all just hang out no matter what, whenever everybody's doing whatever. So, um, I get the CD that I recorded, 
five, six records off of. How long were you making music though from this? Time? This was my first time. So this was my first time actually making a demo. That's you what, did that as demo. Right? Yeah, no. Like, okay, man, cool. This was my first time ever making a demo over his beat. Some was instrumental. Some was the guy Kensei's beats. Shot, um, and he's on uh, Tokyo Vice right now, which is crazy. The uh, show on HBO Max. But anyways, I just plugged him. But um, yeah, so first time I ever made music. I get the CD back. The dude calls. The engineer hits me and is like, yo, the CD is ready. I go get it. I take it to the store because I knew everybody was hanging out there and we was going to skate later. Um, we play the, pop it in right away. I give it to Kissa. He puts it in. We playing it through the store. Most Def just happens to walk in the store. And then I don't even know if he remembers. He got to remember this, though, because I think we spoke about it before. But I don't know if he remembers. But he walked in the store. He heard. He was like, yo, who's this? And then the dude Kensei is like, that's him. And most look at me like, that's you? I'm like, yeah. He was like, oh, okay, that's nice. So then he goes looking through the clothes some more, you know, because he's shopping. Another song comes on. And then he, he, I think I was rapping over the kick push beat on this song, on mm -hmm. that particular song. It was like a freestyle rapping over Lupe Fiasco's kick push beat. And then he's like, this is you? And then I'm like, yeah. He's like, yo, you nice. So before he left, he was like, yo, you got a CD that I can take with me? And then I was like, I literally just got this CD probably like 45 minutes ago. I was like, but you can have it. You know what I mean? Because I'm like, it's most deaf. And then so he gave it to me. He wrote a, um, on the card, like on a business card, he wrote his number and his information. He was like, yo, hit me up. I love to, you know, chop it up, build with you or whatever. Then he took the CD left. They had security out front because like, you know, they, they would have security kind of monitoring how many people come in and out of the store. And the security guard, you know, opened the door. Most got into his truck and he was like, and the security guard came back and told me, he was like, yo, when most left, he put the CD in and they rolled off playing it or whatever. I was like, oh. Yo, yo, what are the odds? I know. Yo, but first of all, first of all, I, got, <laughs> I want to give you a process how you tell a story. It remind me of, I don't know if you remember, uh, was it Kanye West College Dropout? When I hear you tell a story, it's a song where, where Kanye was explaining a story where he he he, he uh rapped his rap to Jay Z. And I oh, think he yeah, said, yeah. like, I got ma mayonnaise color beans, I push miracle whips. whips. Yeah. Like, <laughs> like the way you tell a story, you gotta put the instrumental over it because it, yeah. it, it reminds me of that song. I'm like, <laughs> all I can just hear is nah, that's nah, one of my nah, Yeah, that's one of my favorite nah. songs that <laughs> like all, that's, all these Yeah, that, that's all that, I can think all, about. Yeah, yeah. So so wait, so your <laughs> first demo you make. Yes. Most deaf gets it. Yes. It's most deaf, most deaf then? Yeah, yeah. This is like Miss Fat Booty most deaf. <laughs> like, Wait. well, maybe this is New Danger most deaf, I think. So, what, what's going through your mind is he, the security said, yo, he drove off playing your music. Like, what I'm, you thinking? Everybody, first of all, I'm kind of down, but everybody was like losing it. You know what I'm saying? They was like, oh, like you know, it was like if you, it was like a movie. Like everybody's like running around the store, like oh, it's most like you know, what I'm saying they hype, and I'm hyped too. I'm I'm playing at reserve, but I'm like, dang, that's cool. But then at the same time, in the back of my mind, I'm like, that was my only copy of that. <laughs> like I can't even take it home and like listen to it. Oh, wow. So I had to hit the engineer up um, and just be like, yo, I need another one. I gave it the most death, like you know, type of thing. But um, no, it was definitely. It was reassuring, mm. you know what I'm saying? Because they would always tell me, but I'm thinking they just the homies. Like, oh, yo, you dope. Like, rap over my beats or make some music, you know. But to actually have most come in, who is a supreme lyricist, one of, you know, like, whether you listen or not, he's like one of the top of the top MCs. So for him to actually say that I was nice and um, ask for the CD and to actually play it, you know, as he's driving off, telling the other people that were in the truck, like, yo, check this dude out. He was just in the store, yada, yada. That's dope. Yo, so how long after did you speak to him again? You got, he, he gave me a number? Yeah, no, he gave me his number. So okay. um, he gave me his number. I think it was, um, and this, I don't know if he remembers it. So there was a, I actually did a show in London and he was he was like on the show. Wait, you gotta give me time. How long? This, um, well, this was probably because you ain't just dropped. No, so yeah, you just yeah, no, it was demo. It was most yeah, right. and Now you on tour in London. <laughs> right, like, what right. the hell is going no, on? No, it was like I'm trying to think of the timeline. It might have been a year or two years later. It I might wish, have been. Like I wish a the year. day. I can't like remember. Then. I can't. I I can't remember. So you the was on tour day. in London two years after. 
I was your first demo. I wasn't on tour, but I was doing I mean, shows. Doing yeah, show. so I went over there with a group. I actually went over there with a group of guys, some other artists, and um, another guy um, who was actually throwing shows in Brooklyn, New York, that I used to do a lot. He used to throw this like, um, I, I believe it was also a monthly show that he did at Sputnik, which is in like by Lafayette Gardens, like in the Fort Greene area of. Um, um, like Fort Greene, Best Eye, like Borderline. But anyways, so I went over there and that's how that came about. Like the whole show and everything came about. And then I just, it, it happened to be like most was over there. I think maybe Tyler, it might've been Black Star and like a, a couple other guys. In London. In London. This was, so this was, that's a crazy thing. So I went from doing like local shows in New York, like all over the city. Like I tell people, I say this like sometimes jokingly, but I'm dead serious. There isn't a venue now there's new venues, but from like probably up until I want to say the pandemic, there isn't a venue in New York City where you can rap at mm. that I haven't performed at, except for the Madison Square Garden. That's the only place I've never performed in New York City. Right now, crazy that story sounds like even two years. It's like, bro, I wish today moved like like yesterday <laughs> yeah, right. because like. If I could do my podcast for two years and I'm just on tour or doing shows in London, I'll be looking yeah. forward to it. <laughs> no. Nowadays, you got to do this for at least 10 years. I'm like, shit. Bro, it, like it moved fast. You know, it, It's funny because it moved fast and it moved slow, if that makes sense. Like all of that happened like within probably, like I said, like a two-year span. And then comes around, um, I did a, a mixtape called Going Eight after mm. that. And then that was like... So maybe that, say that was 05, the Going Ape uh, project came out in like 2008. Okay. So, but Going Ape is, that's when you kind of got a lot of buzz, right? Yeah, that's when I started getting buzz. Well, I, not a lot, but that's when I started getting buzz, especially in New York City. Mm. Because again, I used to do a lot of shows. I used to perform with a live band, we, you know, venue to venue, all th from... Harlem to Brooklyn to Queen, wherever, you know what I'm saying? Like Lower East Side, wherever it was that there was a show and I could get on the bill and I can get on stage. If it was 5, 10, 15 minutes, 30, whatever, I was rocking. Wait, all right, so wait, before we move on, Mo's death. Mm -hmm. We seen recently, well, not too long <laughs> yeah, ago, yeah. right? Mo, so we can't, nobody can deny Mo's death. He's hip hop. Yeah, you yeah. can't deny that. <laughs> right. 100%. But you yourself, you said like you started skateboarding. Yeah. Right? And most people, well, me, when I think of hip hop, I think of hood nigga shit. <laughs> just, I just think of project. I think of, <laughs> right. and I don't think of when I think of hood nigga shit. I don't think of skateboarding. <laughs> right, respectfully, right. no, nah, yeah. respectfully. But you're probably hip hop like hip hop too. Like you're <laughs> yeah, yeah. one of them hip hop hip 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 hop <laughs> yeah, niggas. Yeah. Like you're one of them, right? So <laughs> right. like like and you skateboarding, right? <laughs> yeah. And I'm pretty sure most definitely would acknowledge you as hip hop. Yeah. But I say that to say hip hop looks different. Mm -hmm. But most deaf go on record to say Drake isn't hip hop. Mm -hmm. What do you think? I disagree. I think Drake is hip hop. Okay. I think he is. I think he embodies everything that hip hop is, especially through the growth of it. You know what I'm saying? Um, and he he's obviously paving ways ways for other um, artists to follow. Better question then. Okay. Us under well you mm -hmm. coming up under like most deaf being like him being one of the stars that accepted you first. Mm -hmm. Give me the make me understand what he's saying. Oh, that's a great question. I think what he's what he's saying is, you know, I know they joked. Because I saw the clip. I know they joked about Drake being like in Target. Yeah. So I think I can't speak for most deaf, right? But if I'm translating in my, if I'm picking apart what he's saying, I'm thinking that there's a certain level of MCing or a certain level of being hip hop, right? Mm -hmm. And I think when you cross over to a certain area in hip hop, you become commercial. It becomes like pop to some hip hoppers, right? Mm. So when you are commercially accepted, then you're not hip hop no more. Do I believe that? No. Because Drake can still get on a beat and rap his ass off. He rap he rap over primo beats, he rap over you know 
he he you know what I'm saying? So this sparks a great conversation. <laughs> it makes me want to be like, hmm. Wait. So when you cross over to it, like ex, like socially acceptable, some people can look at it as not hip hop. I feel that way. <clears throat> I say that because it's kind of like what's underground, right? And what's mainstream. But it's some really good artists that are main mainstream. Mm -hmm. Lil Wayne, mm -hmm. Jay Z. Mm -hmm. And when you look at the matter of fact, let's just do this comparison. And I might not be old enough to, to so do this comparison. So help is me Lil out. Wayne a, is Lil Wayne hip hop? Come on, bro, don't ask me that question. No, I'm just saying. Duh, yeah. So that why isn't Drake? No, I think Drake is hip hop. No, I, so I was wondering from your perspective, just from from that technology of like being socially accepted and commercial, right? And you might can help because you're probably more qualified to have this conversation. When, we, when I'm looking at Jay Z and Nas, mm -hmm. me, I would think Nas doesn't have the, uh, I don't know, he's no, he's not acknowledged on a a wide spectrum like Jay Z. And me personally, me personally, I think it's because. He didn't evolve with the times because he's like a purist when it comes to hip hop. Like mm -hmm. he's hip hop. Mm -hmm. He's hip hop. Mm -hmm. Right? And I think Jay Z kind of evolved a little bit. He changed the way he his rhymes and his schemes. Mm -hmm. He ain't stayed one lane. Mm -hmm. And I think it it was it made it easy for him to be socially accepted. What we say Jay Z isn't hip hop though? I would never. Yeah, I wouldn't. And I think that. Yeah, so again, I feel like certain people get into that like purist conversation. You okay. know what I'm saying? Like, what's okay. the purist? But I feel like even a purist would acknowledge Jay Z as hip hop, though. Even a purist. Mm -hmm. My opinion. I don't know. <laughs> oh, say it. I didn't want to interrupt. Oh, go ahead. Say it. I don't know. It's fine. Mm, okay. Again, watered down could be commercial pop. Right? Because okay. okay. you're making music that's give him another name. Like don't call it hip hop. Call it uh pop pop. Or something. I don't know. Eh. Nah, it's all hip hop. Okay. Okay. It's all hip hop. That's what I'm saying. Like it's okay. all hip hop. Okay. To me. Just like you, your comparison with most deaf and um I mean with Jay Z, Z and, and Nas. Nas. Yeah. It's like I always said that too, like to me, Nas is an MC, right? Jay Z mm -hmm. is a rapper. I like that. You know what I'm saying? I like that. Oh, okay, I like that. Not that Jay Z can't MC mm -hmm. or can't be, you know, is not a lyricist, but to me, he's a rapper. And I feel like that's what Drake. Drake is a rapper, mm -hmm. but it's still hip hop. Do you think some people, some artists, right? Let's put rapper and MC in the same. Mm -hmm. Some artists, do you think some artists care so much about the craft that it's like, I'm not going to do anything outside of my comfort zone because I believe in this. This is the purest, right? Mm -hmm. I'm a rap, like I'm an MC. Yeah. And I'm going to keep it as MC because this how it should be. Yeah. Where the rapper is like, man, I'm, I'm going to do, I'm I, do, yeah. I'm gonna do something different. I'm mm -hmm. a, I'm, I don't mind uh, going out on a limb and doing something different. Right. Do you look at it like that? I do. I think that's what, you know, that I guess that's my definition of uh a rapper, a rapper is going to make records, right? Mm -hmm. Like they're going to try to, they're going to do whatever it takes to make a, a a record, like a bop, like you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Where MC sometimes, not all of them, but sometimes they get into that, like, man, I'm going to stay pure to what I came here to do, what this is my lane, this is what I want to speak on. I'm not going to speak on anything that is, um, you know, like if I, I'm not going to, I'm not going commercial. I, I ain't going pop. I don't. Yeah. It's hard to define it, but it's like, um, you know, like an MC might be like the, the black woman is a queen and stuff. Mm -hmm. Right. But then yeah. a rapper going to be like, she a bitch. Okay. Like, you know what I'm saying? M maybe not meaning it the same, yeah, but, but it's, it's making just the like, music. yeah. Okay. But a, a, a MC might never, he like, I'm never going to call a woman a bitch. Mm. So where do you think you fall in between the spectrum of an I'm MC an and MC. rapper? <laughs> nah, but uh, I, I think I'm both. I, I think I can be both. You know what I mean? Um, at times, I think if you listen to my catalog, you'll hear it. You know what I mean? Like, um, I pride myself in just making good music. Um, you know, I'm more of a, a, I'm a lifestyle rapper. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I make music for the everyday man and woman. So mm. I'm going to give people 
um, my life and their life at the same time. When mm-hmm. I, you know, what I mean, and I'm, and it's all gonna be cool. It's gonna be a good vibe. It's gonna be good energy, and um, that's that's what I'm about. You know, what I'm saying when it comes to creating music. Okay, so wait, I'm a part of this. People I'm about to categorize <laughs> outside of like your core fans. I feel like when people hear Stylely, they think of MMG. Yeah, but. As we just had conversations, it goes way before MMG, mm-hmm. right? Even to the f- fact that, like, you was working with Dame Dash, DD-172, yep. and Creative Control? Yes. How did that happen? So that happened, again, being outside New York City, performing everywhere. I actually did a show. Um, I believe it was at BB King's. It was uh, me, Mickey Fax. Wiz Khalifa and Currency, and I want to say Styles P was on that show. Maybe other people, uh, you know, but I, I think I remember what those years. What year is this? Give me a reference. I think 2009, I think. 2009. So we talking about like Prime, Styles P. Did Styles drop um, I get high? Uh, uh, yeah, I believe that was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, he performed that, went crazy. The, you know the place. And currency is already currency Lil is, Wayne um, rap after that. So he's like, um, he's Damn. about to get into pilot talk, basically. But this was before pilot talk, though. So this is like, um, uh, wh- what is it like? Maybe fly society times, like when he was really killing the. Was that that's what he was right? What. What Wiz Khalifa was this? This wasn't Kevin Fever, right? It no, 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 no. This was. I'm about uh, to say this. No was, way. This was. No, no. This nah, was flight nah. school. This was flight school Wiz. Damn. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So this you, was uh, what five hundred one Levi's and fl- uh, flight club. So y'all, 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 like, y'all, that Wiz. Y'all in the paint the picture, y'all. What? Yeah. So we all at B, um, BB Kings. We do a show. I want to say it was the CMJ Festival, music festival. Um, we all perform. Everybody gets off stage. I don't know how the conversation came about, but I think Mickey was talking to maybe Currency and Wiz, and they were all saying they were going back to see Dame. And this is, they was like, oh, at DD-172, but nobody knew what it was at the time. Um, And I want to say Creative Control might have been there with Currency. He might have had them, because they had might have already been in talks with however. So anyways, we leave the show. We all end up back at this space DD 172 with Dame Dash. And uh, we all just chopping it up. Creative control, Cootie and Chike. Um, you know, Cootie um, was the one that did the Genius documentary for uh, Kanye on Netflix. <clears throat> Excuse me. So we all there. They're filming everything. Just a general, con- you know, just just a conversation. Uh, we get, like, I think, start rapping. You know, it's MCs in the building. There's rappers in the building. So we just start rapping. And then Dame was like basically like yo I'm opening this space it's DD172 it's kind of like a collective space where um kind of sl- art gallery slash excuse me art gallery slash music hub he was like we got ski beats ski beats was there as well shout out to ski ski beats was there he's like we got ski beats here he makes he produces you know ski did like all a reasonable doubt him and Clark Kent and those guys so he's you know and he did uh Camp Low stuff too I don't know if you're familiar with Camp Low I know you're a little young but yeah I'm just fine yeah, yeah, yeah. I embrace my youth <laughs> yeah, you know yeah, yeah. but you Lucini you know that's all Lucini <laughs> falling from the sky oh, yeah, okay. mm-hmm. anyways <laughs> but yeah Ski is there we there um and then Dane was basically he just opened it up for us he was like yo um if you guys are in the city anytime, you guys can feel free. Come here, create. We got the studio here. We got uh, cameramen and videographers and editors on deck. Um, it's just use this as a space to be able to create content. This was before all of the content game. How much did this help your career at that time? Do you remember? Oh, mega, man. Like that day, I think from that day, the first day we went and the first day I met him, I was there every day for probably like two, three years straight. And you dropped one of your like one of your big singles. Yeah, I dropped. Um, well, address the, came from out of that with okay. me and currency, but I dropped the, the autobiography. Yeah. yeah, so I had put together. So around that same time, I put together this mixtape called the autobiography, and um, that's what I was like really performing at that time. So I probably was performing those records at that at that show that I'm telling you about, and then 
I ended up shooting a music video for the autobiography out of DD-172 with Creative Control. And that was the first music video I ever um, recorded or shot. So wait, so how long after, because I'm, I'm still, like you said, I'm young, so I'm just trying to figure out. How long after, this was post-Rock Nation or Rockefeller? Yes, yes. How long after? Like, how, like what was it? The gap, I guess. I got man, this got to be. It was years. Cause when did when, cause when did I want to say when did the, I think they stopped being Rockefeller or I think they stopped dealing with each other around the Black Album. So when did the Black Album release? Was that two thousand four? Oh three oh four. I want to say a, yeah. I want to say the Black Album check. is when um when they stopped like being Rockefeller. Rockefeller. Like when Rockefeller kind of like so it's like was, four years. Yeah, was completely. Like not it, like no more. Two thousand four. Yeah, two thousand four. Oh. Right. November, November, oh, yeah, oh three. November. Yeah. So, okay. Yeah. So okay. I think oh four. Late, oh, three, it was oh, you know oh three oh four. It was done. So yeah, you think it, you th you talking four or five years later? Dame still because this going. was like two thousand and nine. Okay, so Dame still going crazy. He got currency. He got before you. It was uh, currency. Where's Khalifa? Um. That was the two big names, right? Yeah, and then um, he had, like, the Black Keys come through there. I don't know. They're, like, a rock band. they actually from Ohio, too. Shout out to the Black Keys. But um, he had the Black Keys who, they, like, mega now. You know what I'm saying? Like So him creating that, right? Mm -hmm. Him being able to create all of this. Like, I guess, how would you look at Dame Dash now? I mean, I look at him the same. Like, I mean, he's a he's a great business mind. You know what I'm saying? He's obviously a mogul. He has amazing ideas. You know what I'm saying? And he continues to reinvent himself. Um, business, you know what I mean? He's definitely one of like, I, you definitely got to get... It's crazy because I think I seen... Nah, I think I seen him say on Vlad when... This is a long time ago. Mm -hmm. He was saying that he could see the um, inspiration from Revolt of creative of creative control. Do you see that? Cause you see that? Cause yeah, you were for sure, for sure. And that's sure. time. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Because they I mean, I will say this. I I mean, I could be wrong, but before I got with got around DD one seventy two and creative control, before I got around Cootie and Chike and those guys, like I didn't know any other artists that were filming everything. Like the the even vlogs, right? Vlogs came about I, through creative control. I don't remember any artist before that like documenting every thing so, they did. So you telling <laughs> me you telling me it wasn't Soldier Boy that did it first. It was Creative Control. I mean, maybe Soldier Boy. I don't know. <laughs> I, I, I wasn't paying attention. That's your that's your age group. <laughs> and I'm sure, I'm sure somewhere Soldier Boy would say he, he did, was the yeah, first yeah. rapper to do this. So you gonna go on record and tell me that Soldier Boy wasn't the first person to do a vlog? Uh, and it was Dame Dash. That's what you gonna sit up here and I'm, tell me. I'm gonna say Dame, man. I'm gonna say Dame because I. But no, it, I, I wasn't Soldier Boy the first one on YouTube though. Bro, I don't know. I think he was. I think he that's was. what he said. No, I think he was though. Honestly, I no, because I feel like it was a rapper somewhere that had like proof of like they were on YouTube before him. I think oh, really? I don't know who it was, but I, I remember who was it? It was MySpace. Okay. He, oh, Soldier Boy. Oh, okay. Okay. I, okay. I thought he was the first one on YouTube. I feel like it was a rapper that came out. No, it was a rapper that came out and showed like the proof. It you want to know the? Uh, I'm gonna tell you how old I am, right? You know the first person I remember on YouTube Ooh. is the unforgettable nigga. Remember him? Remember him? <laughs> Who's that? He, 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 he I don't even like, know that is. Yeah, unforgettable. Yeah, he used to be like unforgettable. <laughs> like he used to tell these stories. Or I, I don't even know if he was saying unforgettable. It was something <laughs> like that. But that's the first nigga I ever knew. To be. Yeah, no, that's what he was. Bro, I'm telling you, look it up. Yeah, he was walking around in the woods like on some Blair Witch project. I don't stuff. even remember that shit. Bro, you got to look it I'm up. I'm going to look up that. Because it, it's probably still on there. That okay. joint should have a billion views now. <laughs> like, I'm crazy. telling you, whenever I first heard of YouTube, I think it was because of him, bro. Okay, so we're going to give it a Dame <laughs> Dash. Like, we're going to yeah. give it a Dame Dash. Let me ask you this. Do you think he get the respect he deserve? Dame? Mm -hmm. I, I, I do, and you know, I do, and I don't. Just because... Um, I feel like people try to dismiss or discredit everything that he's ever done just because of, 
He's outspoken. Exactly. Or, you know, they might disagree with one or two things, and then it's like everything he ever said or did was not valid. Mm. Or they might be Jay-Z fans, and they just, he's not valid. You know what I mean? Like, so for whatever reason. But I think that can he get more, I guess, credit and love? Probably. You know what mm. I'm saying? I think we all can. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I you, think we we all pioneer things in in a certain way that deserves like to be spoken on, and I feel like he's one of those people. Yo, I'm usually the one in the room always just joking about me being old, but I'm gonna <laughs> shift it to you because you want that, so I'm gonna let you have that title. I'm not but, old though. You've been saying you you so that's what you've been saying. So listen, I'm gonna let you have that. <laughs> I'm gonna soak all the knowledge up. Yeah, I'm wise, wisdom. I'm okay, you wisdom. You wise. <laughs> Let me ask you this, bro. You've been in the game so long. We see people like a Dame Dash who speaks on things, right? But then we see people like a a Jay-Z who probably haven't been as vocal. Mm-hmm. And you see how it can hurt a Dame Dash. Mm-hmm. Do you think it's worth it? In what sense? Of your career, of your legacy, of what you're trying to build, do you think it's worth it to to stand on what you believe in so much? I think it's mandatory to protect your legacy, especially when you are doing it from the heart and you're doing it with good intentions. Mm. So if your belief follows those things, your beliefs follow those things, and that's what you want to see happen, and that's what you want to make happen in other people's lives when it comes to, like you said, if I'm giving you advice because I've been in this for X amount of years, I'm going to stand on it, but I'm going to also do it in a way that you receive it in a good way. Mm. Right? You know what I mean? I don't want you to take it and be like, well, like you said, like, well, he did it this way or he took this the shortcut or he, you know, was wilding by, so I can wild and do it. You know what I mean? So I think that you just got to basically do it in a way where you can be a good example. Mm. And I think it's worth it then to answer your question. Yeah. No, I, I just say that because I, be, I feel like Dame is definitely somebody that deserves his just doing his flowers and I feel like, like you said, man, a lot of times his history with so many other people over powers or, or get or have him overlooked because of people, it might rub people the wrong way. It goes back to what you said, like when we first started the conversation, be a good person. Mm. Yeah, that's crazy. If you be a good person, not many people have anything to say bad about you. Nah, facts. So it's all about how you affect people's, you know, that's why they always say, watch who you step on on your way to the top. You know mm, what I mean? Mm-mm. I swear, bro, I think somebody told me this years ago, they were like, bro, a person, they'll forget your face. They might even forget your name, but they'll never forget how you made them feel. Exactly. Never. Exactly. And that's how I try to move like, man, I don't care. I'm outside having a bad day. Somebody say, Y'all watch your podcast? Well, for real? My podcast? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. You right. see my podcast? <laughs> right, right. Nah, and I mean it. I'm, it yeah, of like, course, of course. Same damn. with me. Like, you know, like anybody come to me and they say my name or say a song or listen to anything or they shout BCG or whatever. Like, bro, it's a humbling experience. You know what I mean? So wait, bro, let's go. Let's, I know that people probably waiting. I have no idea, like, given the history, given the type of music you make, maybe you can answer this. What did Rick Ross see in you to sign you to MMG? Talent. He saw, you know, a dope MC. He saw a dope artist. But it was so different, though, (laughs) than what you see at MMG. Right, it was. But from, I I can't speak for him. That's a question that, you know, he, I guess he has to answer. You never Uh, asked him? No, from when when I first met him, you know what I mean? Like, what from what he told me was like, you know, at that time, DD-172 was going on. We were doing a lot of uh, content. A lot of the content was being on MTV jams mm-hmm. and MTV, um, just regular MTV as well. And um, he saw the video with me and Currency, mm-hmm. the address video. We shot that out in Jamaica. And he said, 
he was like, yo, I saw Currency before. He was like, but then when you came on rapping, he was like, I, I was like, who this dude? He was like, you had your head up and you was rapping. He was like, and I'm listening. He was like, I'm like, yo, this dude's spitting. You know what I mean? And then that's what kind of piqued his interest in like, you know, finding out who I was. And he, you know, I guess he started following me and kind of paying attention to what I was doing. And at that time, I was doing everything independent. I was, then I was on tour overseas. Then I was going to, I was in China doing shows. Um, I was all over the country, like the domestically all over the country doing shows. So this was all independent and he was seeing all of this, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? Just off of social media. And um, that's what made him, you know. How did he, that call happen? Like, what happened? Like, he reached out to Currency, mm -hmm. and uh, Currency uh, called me and was like, yo, Ross want to get a hold of you or whatever. And then I was like, he was like, I just was calling. I was, I was just asking to see if it's okay to give him your number. And then I was like, I don't know what he want, but, I mean, that's cool. You know what I'm saying? And then you Currency was like, yeah, I don't know. He was like, he just asked me, so I'm asking you before I give your number out. And I was like, well, I appreciate that. But I was like, yeah, you could give him, you know, my number. And then Ross called me, and then um, I think he, like, probably two days later, I was down, I went to, um, he was on the I Am Music tour with Lil Wayne. They mm -hmm. was on tour together, and I went down to Dallas and met him down there. And um, we chopped it up, and he, you know, I, I went on the tour bus with him, and he was just like, bro, he was just, he told me that story I was telling you, just like how he found out about me, and that he was, you know, vibing with me and listening to me and all that. And he was like, yo, I want to sign you to MMG. What's going through your mind? First of all, before that, shout out to Currency for being a real nigga. Yeah, yeah. Because some niggas that I'm like, yo, you sure you don't want to holler at me, bro? Like, I mean, I'm just saying. Like, right, right, right. <laughs> but no, shout out to Currency for being nah, a real nigga. Nah, shout out to so, Currency. So for on that, what's going through your mind on that tour bus when he like, y'all want to sign you? Man, I was kind of like, I don't even know, bro. Like, I'm just, you know, all kind of emotions, but it was just dope to kind of like, to see that all the hard work and all the, you know, just all the hard work that I put in was like actually being like recognized, you know what I'm saying? Whether it would have happened or not, or I would have ended up being with MMG or not. I mean, I was, but it was just a blessing, bro. Like for real, like it was a blessing to like have somebody actually reach out and be interested in Stally. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like you're dope. Mm. Yo, so how was Cause that again, time? I spent all those years from, like I said, before meeting the most deaf in the store to that point, it was mm. like a lot that went into it. And I think a lot of people don't realize that, like, even when I was with MMG, I think some people, again, commercial, right? A lot of people didn't know the grind and the grit and, that I went through to get to that point. They thought, like, Ross just found me and was like, well, here's Stally, y'all. <laughs> like, you know what I'm saying? No, like, I put in blood, sweat, and tears. I put in a lot of work. I put up a lot of... Uh, my money, my, you know, I had a lot of, you know, I had manager at the time who invested in me, you know what I mean? Made sure that I, I got things and got places I needed to be. Like, it was a lot that we sacrificed, you know what I'm saying? So it was well earned. And um, I just appreciate Ross for even, like, acknowledging seeing that. Yo, you touched on something that probably a lot of people, a lot of fans and supporters probably wouldn't even understand. Yo, how was that moment when, you know, like, you on this high you on this mountaintop almost, and like you come into a situation, and people judging you like, who is this nigga? <laughs> like, how, did that hurt your confidence? Like, how was that for you mentally? It never hurted my confidence. It, you know, it was something new though, mm. right? You know, I, I won't lie because I'm somebody again who I'm all over New York City. New York, it's the mecca. This is hip hop. Like, it's the birth of it. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm going everywhere. I'm going overseas. Like I said, I'm in Beijing. I'm, like, everywhere, and I'm getting love. People are loving the music. I'm selling out shows, everything. And then, so, to kind of receive those snarky comments or people be like, who this? Why this nigga? Who the, you know, of course you're going to be like, what? Like, who are you? Like, because anybody can say anything on the internet. You know what I mean? But did it bother me? Nah, mm. it didn't shift nothing. It didn't make me change who I was. It didn't make me become a different artist. Like I was always me through the process because I believe in myself. Mm. You know what I'm saying? That being me and believing in myself and and um, being the artist that I am is what got Ross to call me anyway. So wait though, because at this time the poster boys for MMG and maybe not. Let me not say that because that might not sound. Is appealing, but <laughs> MMG right. was Rick Ross, Meek Mill, Wale, mm -hmm. and I feel like 
Style <laughs> <laughs> Wait, were, was that the same time you came after, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, I'm, cool, I'm, cool, I'm, cool. I'm so just, I'm just no, nah, that's cool. I'm just cool. So we got Meek Mill, Rick Ross, Wale, mm -hmm. and even in a moment, and I would love to have a conversation with Wale about this. But I feel like we saw for a moment, for a quick moment, Wale even tried to like start making more of because we talk about MC and rapper, right? Mm -hmm, like mm -hmm. we see like flashy music. Mm -hmm. I feel like it was a moment where Wale tried to make those rap, and they were good, mm -hmm, but mm -hmm. it wasn't Wale. Mm -hmm. And I'm wondering, did you fall into that 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 hole of trying to make flashy rap, being more of a rapper than an MC, who you truly were? Nah, I mean, you can listen to my catalog before mm -hmm. and after, or before, during, and after. And you never felt no pressure to make different music at all? I mean... I guess doing it and feeling it is two different things. So maybe there was some pressure to do it because you it doesn't even come from... It comes from a label because it's a music business, right? Mm -hmm. So when you're in the music business, you're going to have people that want to... Um, they're going to want you to do things that's good for their business, right? Okay. <laughs> that's, that's what happens when you sign to a label or you sign to... A, you got to get with their business and you got to help their business. So, of course, you know, there might have been whispers or there might have been, even if they didn't want to, you know what I mean? They might have been like, hey, you should rap over this beat. You know, you should talk about this. You know, it might have been a... But it wasn't like, nigga, do this. Okay. Or you you out of here. You know what I'm saying? It wasn't like that. It was just... I feel like, but it's funny that you said that. Like, they were suggesting mm -hmm. because even that, it was proven that artists being themselves was the win because I think... Outside of uh, Ross, Meek Mill was the only one that went diamond. We could do fact check. That was M M MMG. And it was off of like a song with like a Jeremiah or something like that. Like mm. it was a love song. Like he was the only one really? that really had a lot of success. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and it was like Meek, off of. No, nah, Wale. Oh, yeah, Wale. Yeah, Wale. Yeah, yeah, and yeah, you yeah. would think at the time, because Meek was out of here, like you would thought you would thought of Meek. It was Wale. Yeah. But Wale been Wale. Right? Even before the MMG situation. I'm from Baltimore, so you can't. Yeah, like, that's what yeah I'm so right? I would say yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I would say yeah. I like, mean, the, I think the world was Because the mixtape about was nothing. A, Wale was like, I mean, I, I mean. The mixtape about was, nothing He was, was very crazy. successful. Yeah, yeah no, I'm, I'm just saying. saying. He, was, yeah. he was very. He, he had me. records on the radio and had, yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah, so yeah, yeah, yeah. He, That was before um, MMG, yeah. so. But we can't ignore the spotlight that it put on you because during that time, right, mm -hmm. you were nominated for Best Mixtape uh, BET Awards, right? Yes, yeah. So you can't ignore no, no. what it does for right. you. So what happened then? What, what goes left? Why Why I say, I'd rather go my separate ways? Create, I mean, it's just a feeling you get, you know what I'm saying? Like, man, we've been talking for a while, man. I feel like you my friend now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Talk to what, what happened? Nigga? Right, like, what was right, wrong? Right. I mean, it's just a feeling you get, like, just... I told you all of the things that I went through, right? Mm -hmm. Before meeting Most Def, after meeting Most Def, before meeting Dame, meeting Dame, before meeting Ross, meeting Ross. So I've always just had a, a indie spirit. I've always had a spirit of just doing things my way and just being creative and um, expressing myself creatively. Mm -hmm. And when I feel like anything hinders that, then I'm going to remove myself from that. You know, my mom used to tell me, like, growing up playing sports or playing basketball or being in a relationship or whatever, it's like when you fall out of love with something, it's time to move. Or if something starts to um, kind of, like, make you feel a certain way about something, you got to kind of readjust to find that that passion and that love again, if that makes sense. And when if I ever feel anything that's stepping in the way of that, then I have to, I got to take a couple steps back. Can, and and that's just you know that's just what it was. Can I respectfully challenge the thought? Just mm -hmm. it, you know what it sound like. Uh, they say like when you when you're done having fun with it, I'll be done with it. Like when I'm done having fun with it, I'll be done with it. Mm -hmm. It sounds similar to that. Mm -hmm. And I hear people say that. I just necessarily don't agree because I feel like these things we talk about marriage. Mm -hmm. I'm, let's just compare it to marriage. Marriage can be very challenging, mm -hmm. but. When you put in the work, you understand right. the value of it, mm -hmm. working out all of these things. So it might be a time period mm -hmm. where I'm not having fun with it. Right. <clears throat> but I get nothing from quitting. 
from leaving. Yeah. So I shouldn't say that I was ever not having fun with it. I should say that if I am trying to express myself creatively and I don't feel like someone is pushing that or believing in it, mm. I don't want to be a partner with you. Okay. Again, though, <laughs> you had your higher success. Nominated mixtape BT Awards. And just like I asked you about Dame, what's worth it? Like, can can we swallow our pride for a second mm -hmm. to make something work for the benefit of the future? We can't when it's jeopardizing your beliefs and your morals. What is your belief in morals, though? What is that? It's on a grand that, scheme of things. Well, if I'm if I don't want to make a certain, if I don't want to be. If my image is my image, right? Mm -hmm. And I don't want to be perceived as a flashy street. I don't want to even put myself in those situations. Then why am I? Mm. Some would say. Because then you're not. Who you are. Exactly. Why would I lose myself for the fame and attention? Or for the popularity. Or to get a hit record or whatever the case may be. I'm speaking in that language. Why be... If it doesn't feel good, I'm not going to do it. This conversation... And if you don't believe, I'm not going to do... I'm not here to make you believe. No, nah, I get it. It reminds me of the conversation that <laughs> uh, Steve Harvey had with... Uh, with um, Monique. Mm. Y'all remember that conversation? Yes. It reminds me of that. And it's like, whose side do you like? Because you can, like, whose side? Because I understand, Steve. It's like, I got to feed my family. Mm -hmm. Monique, like, that ain't me. Mm -hmm. Fuck what you talking about. <laughs> yeah. But it's like, I understand both sides. Mm -hmm. So it's like, so, okay. And some people will do things to, to feed their family. But let me say, let me, like, if I, if you come to me and you, like, I got this great idea for a podcast and I got somebody that wants to invest in the podcast, but you have to sign off for it. And then I say, no, how would that make you feel? If it's going to be life changing. So again, we boy, if, if was a, a fifth, <laughs> we all be drunk. Right. I ain't been in this situation. So I, it's easy for a nigga to be like, yeah, man, that's my brother. I take a bullet for that nigga. The gun, you looking at a gun, yeah, what you going to do now? Mm -hmm. So it's easy to say what if. I know it probably would hurt my feelings, mm -hmm. right? And I don't know. Mm -hmm. That's why I'm asking straight from the source because you've been in. And I'll just be wondering, like, looking back on it, I know we always say we don't have no regrets, but I wonder if we could change as a man. Mm -hmm. Like, if it's somebody that's going through something that, like, if it's something you could change, would you look back and be like, you know what? I might have could have budged a little bit. Nah. Shit, that's fair. Yeah. I budged a little bit. Mm. Mm. I was there. Damn. <laughs> that's real, though. That's real, bro. I, you know I think that's saying? real. I think what happened is we talk about, again, we talk with this conversation, we talk about the industry a lot. It's easy to look at things on the screen. Again, because I'm interviewing you. I do my research, mm -hmm. but I'm still a spectator. Yeah, yeah. You, know, you know what I'm saying? Like, mm -hmm. It's so easy to look at somebody and be like, that look good. Mm -hmm. Oh, I would. Mm -hmm. like, you have no idea. Mm -hmm. like, you have no idea. Like, <laughs> so like, nah, I get it. And I yeah. can only just take the answer. Like, I get it. Now that's crazy. Okay. Everything that's, that glitters ain't gold. That's real. That's real. <laughs> Damn. Literally and figuratively. That's a fact. They got some moistenite diamonds <laughs> yeah, yeah, right yeah. now. Yeah. That should look pretty good. Yeah, it's a moist. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, second thought. It was like, ah, I'm good. <laughs> nah, not right now, but uh, you could have got me. But, but nah, man, I get it. I get it. So moving forward, we got this track with KD. Yeah. I feel like nobody saw this coming. Maybe you. Maybe. We ain't see it coming. Yeah. What the fuck is going on? <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just curious. Like, what's going on? Like, what's up? Man, KD, shout out to him. DMV, right? Yeah. yeah. Shout out K KD is my brother, man. But, you know, that's that's my brother. That's the homie. Um, 
and you know we talk almost every day you know what i'm saying um and he just is a a, a hip hopper you know what i mean he's somebody who's really into music he's always uh from what i understand he's always made music produced beats things like that so um in the summer some off time he got a studio in the crib he hit me and was like yo send me a track and that's how the, the record came about wait 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 bro, i ain't about to skate over this bro <laughs> KD bought you some sneakers before, like oh, yeah, the first yeah, time yeah, you yeah, met yeah. him, right? Yeah. Like, wait, wait, how did so, this happen? So a long time ago, this was like, I think this was right when I signed to MMG, which is funny. Um, I was down in uh, DC and I was working with uh, Wale and Black Cobain and all of those guys, you know, down there. And uh, we were down there shooting a video too. I, we were shooting a music video and I was living in New York. We were about to leave and head back to New York. I had stopped in a sneaker store out in D.C., uh, me and my wife. And uh, um, we get in there and we just, you know, looking around. And I was going to get these Jordans um, that hadn't been out yet, right? Um, <clears throat> or they was coming out later, but he was going to let us get them early. I should say that. So I went to go pick them up. KD walks in the store. He's in there. He's, you know, doing the same thing, I guess, shopping, looking around. We talk it, we chop it up for a second. Then he leaves. I'm like, yo, I'm about to go, you know, back up to the crib, back to New York. He's like, all right, yo, see you soon. Be, you know, safe, right? Whatever. So then he bounces and I go to the counter. I'm like, yo, can I get this two pairs of sneakers or whatever? And then he's like, yeah, here you go. He hand me the sneakers. And I'm like, okay, what I owe you? He's like, oh, nah. He's like, KD took care of them. He's like, he got them for you. I was like, oh, that's love. Like, Ooh, you know, what and I'm you ain't even like, I ain't know nothing. First of all, I just want to give you this prop, bro. You tell stories immaculate. It's amazing. <laughs> like every time you speak it, I'm sorry. All I hear is la la la. la. And like and when you saying it, I could just see nah, like a comic book, like the guy pulling yeah. the sneakers on and like Katie walking up, like, nah, he got him. Like I can hear nah, the voices. I appreciate like, I'm like, damn. I appreciate hey, bro, shout out to your storytelling. It's crazy. Right. So I'm just listening. All I hear is like, yo, look, if you're watching the interview, right? Put the instrumental over. I, I swear to God, it's gonna hit different. Right. <laughs> that shit is fine. But yeah, okay. So wait, so you don't know this man from Adam and Eve? He buys you nah. Wait, but how do you take that? Because niggas from the hood, <laughs> yeah, like, you yeah. can take that two different ways. Like, bro, what the like? Right, especially right, right. I'm with my lady, like, right, what, yeah, you, yeah. what you trying to do? Right, yeah, like, yeah. what you good? Nah, I mean, I, I you know, you you gonna have, you know, that thought like, <laughs> like oh, yo, you good? trying to show me out, man? Like, yeah, I, I got no, bread, I mean, man. Yeah, I got right. time to get right, money, right. but I'll keep my bread. You know what I mean? He got more bread. You know? <laughs> <laughs> so, so good looking, KD. He could buy me some shoes right now, Paul. <laughs> like, you know what I'm saying? Nah, but um, nah, but. I, I took it as a gesture. I was like, that's very dope. Again, I don't think anybody ever did that for me, you know yeah. what I'm saying? And I, I just thought that was ill, you know what I'm saying, for him to even kind of, like, consider that or think about doing that. Because, again, we ain't know each other like that. That was kind of like off that weekend, I, I believe, I, I seen him in the studio the day before and then the next day in the store. So that's the only interactions we had. So for him to kind of be like, Whatever I I don't know what he said because you know the dude ain't tell me but whatever he said he was like whatever he got I got it or whatever or he took care of it and I just thought that was love. Um, why can't I never get lucky? Like you know this? what's so crazy now that I think about it I should have bought more stuff. I should have been like, like oh word I let me get uh, nah uh, that's what but, he said <laughs> yeah yeah what. He got whatever I want. Okay. <laughs> you see them red October? Right, right yeah, yeah, yeah. Up, <laughs> what we going? We going to go crazy. Bro. Nah, facts nah facts. but again, you know, that was love. And then um, in between that time, we kind of bumped into each other here and there. Um, like me going to some games, seeing them there, and just kind of being out and about, maybe like a event or two. Um, so, yeah, it's just always kind of kept in contact. Um, we had mutual friends, too, like, you know what I'm saying, that was, like, close to him and uh, um, that I knew um, his brother. You know, just, you know, it was always kind of like a, what's that, six degrees of separation? Okay. Is that what that, yeah. So, so wait, I know what it is now. Katie, a Merlin nigga. He a master manipulator. He was putting, <laughs> he was sowing his seeds since the beginning. <laughs> he gonna be like, yo. Six years from now, <laughs> I'm gonna send that nigga a song, and he better do that song. Right. <laughs> <laughs> that might have been the case, but <laughs> so wait, so so he hits you, say, "Yo, I got this song I want to do." No, no. So I, he was like, he just was, I guess, in the studio working, mm -hmm. and um, he was like, "Yo, 
was he was like, Style, send me um a record. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like something to get on or whatever. And at first I'm like, send you send him me one of your records. Yeah, yeah. It's for him to get on. See, that's the second disrespect. <laughs> like, wait, what? Send you my record? That's what I'm saying. That's why I'm like, bro. You don't fucking play bro. Right, yeah. That, exact, no, that's what I'm thinking. I'm like, bro, like, I really do this. Like, yeah. but I, I know that he, you know, like he really into it. So I'm like, it did take me a minute to kind of like okay. figure out what to send him. Okay. So so you sent him a throwaway. No, I didn't. That's that's the thing. So I didn't want to, because I'm not, I'm not playing. I'm like, this is me. Like, just like I tell people this all the time, like. If I was to go run, uh, do an open gym run with them, right? Mm -hmm. And it's him and a whole bunch of other NBA players. They're not going to pick me up if I'm trash, right? right? Yeah. Or they, if I do get on the court and I play, they're going to be like, you're going to have to sit this next one out. Yeah. You out here trying to hurt niggas and all kind of shit. Yeah. Like, you know what I'm saying? Just because you're not, you're not moving like them. So that's kind of how I feel when it comes to the music. So... We have another friend, so we're in a group chat as well. You know, we're in a group chat, and there's a lot of us in there. So one of the homies that's a mutual friend of both of ours, my man Trey, he was, I was speaking to him one day, and he was playing some of KD's music that he had been working on. Okay. So mind you, I never heard KD's music that okay. he's been working on, but I heard this, and I'm like, oh, that's KD? You know, like, I, I was like, I was impressed. I'm like, yo, this is, he hard, like, he can go. So that was when I was like, I got a record for him. Okay. Because I heard the vibe and where he was at creatively. And then I'm like, oh. So then I, I remember I, I had the record. I think I played it for Trey first or sent it to him. I was like, yo, is this, you know, this something that he's like, on, like the wave he's on? And then Trey was like, yeah, you should send him that. That's when I, you know, I sent it over. Now, I know I joke a lot. But he actually went crazy. On Definitely. But he sound like... Like one of them purest rappers too, though. Like a hip MC. That, yeah, I was surprised because, like, usually, like when I hear like uh, hoopers that rap, mm -hmm. they rap like the young kids. Like you know what I'm saying? Right, like, right, right. Yeah, you, you know what I'm saying? Like they <laughs> right, rap like them. Right, right. So when I heard KD, I'm like, wait, what? Nah, he really do this, and he really, uh, you know, he a student. He really like, bro. He really like. We have conversations. Like he, he know what he talking was you about surprised? when it comes to music. I was, I was. I was. <laughs> I was. I ain't gonna lie. Yo, I was. What about the feedback? No, the feedback's been incredible. It's insane. It's like, niggas incredible. is rolling, I'm rocking so, with yeah, this. Yeah, I'm so, but I'm so happy for him because I know he, like, he, he might say that he doing this for fun or he, you know, but I know that it, it, it means something to him because he is a hip hopper. Bro, I ain't gonna lie to you. I would probably have to get on a phone call with Katie, like, bro. Stop telling niggas you do this for fun, bro. <laughs> you on a track with me, bro. You making right, me right. look bad. You tell me you do this for fun. Like, this nah, ain't no but, play, play. But that's why, you know, again, you know, I, I say this, like, one of my thing is when I create music and I do a collaboration, I want it to be a great song. I want it to be a great record. I don't care who it is. Mm. So I, I picked that record and that vibe because I wanted it to be a record. Mm. That's a song. It's a great hook. Great bars by me and him. But it wasn't like I was going to send him something like, oh, I'm about to send him this and I'm going to out-rap him. Mm -hmm. Like, you know what I'm saying? Because it's like, like you said, he's not a rapper. I, I just want to do whatever it takes to make a great record, and that's what we accomplished. Mm -hmm. And I'm so happy that the feedback has been so positive and that everybody's been tapped in and listening. I see a lot of people making highlight mixtapes to it. Like, all you kids out there, scared money. I want to see all little high school mixtapes, you know what I'm saying? I want to... The, 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 the videos y'all send into these colleges, put that scared money on there, put it on Instagram so we can repost it. Mm. But I, I love seeing that, though. I've been seeing that on Instagram and TikTok. Um, I, I just love the reception that he's been getting from other athletes, from artists, from just the people in general, you know. It, it's just dope to see. And Even I think that is the, it's the, speaking of the awards, that's collaboration of the year. Ain't nobody make no, I, I don't know who can top it. And ain't nobody made that much noise. I know we only in March, but ain't nobody made that much noise in hip hop all year or in the last six months. Stally and KD did it. See, you can't even think of nobody else. Grammys, holler at us. <laughs> I told you. you BET like, Awards, bro, holler at us. Hey, hey, Imagine KD, seven foot. 
coming to get that award. <laughs> bro, I told you we've been chopping it up for so long. You feel like you my man. Yeah, we are. So don't like, tell me, don't, don't, don't ask me no questions you don't want to answer to. Because it's been somebody that made who? noise. But it's not fair, though. Who? So I give you a strong number who? two. What do you mean, who? Yay? Yes. <laughs> What? What are you saying? Go crazy if you want. Go crazy. Go ahead. <laughs> nah. Shame from nah, Holland. Nah, go crazy nah, if you want. Nah, yeah, yeah. Before you yeah. talk about. I mean, yay is yay. All right, then. No, I'm a, I'm a yay. All right. I'm a, I'm a yay fan. All right. so. I'm a yay, too. That's how yay. I'm, I'm a yay. I'm a, yeah, I'm a, I'm a yay. yay. I'm a yay. <laughs> I'm a yay. I'm a yay. I'm a yay. No, no. Is that, that's what he should, hey, you know how, like no, 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 but you know how uh, I'm a they yeah, got yeah. the beehive? Yeah. I'm, I'm a yeah. I'm a yeah. Yeah, yeah I'm a yeah, yeah. I'm a grown ass man. I ain't about to call I'm myself yeah. no yeah. I ain't no. no. I'm a no. <laughs> you stupid. But, but no, besides but, that, but yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll give you Kanye, that. Kanye, for that. sure. I'll give you that. Kanye, send me some beats. Send me and KD some beats, man. But so let me ask you this then. Since, cause <laughs> I know you from Ohio, but you got some New York in you. you yeah, know, yeah. You're New big York, time, big time. Low key for real. So you want it tight? That everybody, they overlooking you talking about KD on your song. So basically, he out you on your song. I'm just saying. <laughs> I'm just saying. I'm just no, saying. But you know why? If you if you see more chatter about him, it's because he did what he's supposed to do. He's KD, bro. I don't think Jay-Z said that about Eminem. No, he's KD, bro. I don't think Jay-Z was like, oh, that's Eminem. He probably I've done didn't records say that, with, He probably said that. <laughs> I've done records with a lot of people from Rick Ross. Who else? Scarface. Get crazy. Go ahead. I'm just saying. <laughs> it's a wide range. Nobody ever spanked me on a record, bro. Oh, okay. That's a fact. Okay. Go listen to any of them. Records. I ain't mad at that. You're supposed to say that. No, it's a fact. KD spanks you, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a troll. <laughs> oh, man. Nah, that, but shout out. <laughs> See, I'm trying to shout out to KD, though. No, no, no. But he did good. No, though. he did a He stand, snapped, though. And, and I was like, not like again, that like, I mean, we here talking about it, too. Like, I'm I'm talking about it because it is KD, bro, and it's legendary, bro. Mm. Like, to have somebody, to have a future Hall of Famer, like, as soon as when he take his sneakers off, he walking straight into the Hall of Fame. Easy. You know what I'm saying? So, to, they better be talking about his verse. Mm. They better be talking about him because for him to, <clears throat> excuse me, for him to step out of step off the court and, and into the music. That's like me going out, like I said, and playing against them and scoring 30. Niggas going to be like, they all oh, they going to talk, they ain't going to talk about the NBA, niggas. They going to yeah. talk about Staley. You think KD get over, overlooked? On the court? Yeah. I do sometimes. I do. That's a, I don't know. I do. And again, I think that a lot of people try to, it's the Dame Dash thing, right? <clears throat> Because, you know, the Warriors situation and all that, I think people try to discredit his legacy or the things that he's done because they feel like that was um, a sour thing to do. Yeah. I mean, I was salty, too, because, you know, he played against my Cavs and they beat him. But, you know what I'm saying? So I was salty, too. But at the same time, it's what you said. Do what makes you happy. Do what you got to do to get what you need to get. I, I ain't going to lie. I ain't the biggest NBA, like... Fan, mm -hmm. but I fuck with the new NBA uh, players, and I say that to say like, because bro, I'm kind of with you. I might ask questions to provoke, ev evoke emotions. I'm with you with this shit. I'm indie for real. Keep it a hundred, because mm -hmm. these companies don't give a damn. Mm -mm. And the minute you do some foul stuff, you out of there. Mm -hmm. So y'all niggas talking rings, man. <laughs> yeah. Y'all niggas want to keep doing this fake ass this loyalty to you know right. damn loyalty, boy. It's still a job, right. loyalty. All right. So I'm saying I might play devil's advocate and joke, but no, I, I get yeah, hey, that's what you're supposed to do. So I get it, bro. Like yeah. I, I think I don't. Know, I think KD is really one of the greatest niggas to do it. Of course. Hands down. Hands down. Easy. Easy. So like, it's not even, bro. He changed. I mean, it, it, you can say that he changed and revolutionized the game in many ways. I mean, being 
six eleven, seven foot, doing all, having the goods. You know, Paul's like he do everything. You gotta relax. <laughs> no, I'm just saying. Like, you gotta chill, he, bro. He, he doing. I, I paused <laughs> it, bro. But he doing everything. Yeah, facts. facts. You know what I'm saying? There's yeah. nothing that he ain't doing at that size. Pause. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> styley, everybody. <laughs> nah, bro. But no, nah, I mean that, bro. That's fire, bro. I but think... again, you know what I'm saying? And, and back to that. That's why I'm saying, like, I'm I'm happy that the record is out. Make sure y'all go and support it. Scared money. I'm independent, so go buy it. Buy it for me. You know what I'm saying? KD already got it. Yeah. You buying it for? Tell Stiley. that nigga go p- promote it some more, man. Yeah. yeah. KD, go pro- you here here promote this. Now you got it. I'm gonna text him. Yeah, I'm gonna text him too. Yeah, tell, I'm gonna let him. I'm gonna tell him. Yeah, I'm gonna yeah, tell him. Yeah, I'm gonna do it. <laughs> but again, back to him, bro. It's appreciated, and I, I I be telling people since we homies, and I was telling bro, KD did, and again talking that like bro, there ain't a speaking of you talk. I know you was joking about him getting me on the record or whatever, um, but with KD. It, he did what no rapper could have did for that record. Mm. No, yeah. I mean, I think it was good. Just tell him about the rap. No, I'm just saying, like, with the conversation. Do you see this being a real like a real thing for him in the future? I think it could be. I, I mean, if he wants to. You talk who to knows? him. Do you think it would be? I, I, I don't know. I, I, I can't gauge it. You know what I'm saying? Like, I really don't know. But I think it could be. I be yeah. telling him, I'm like, yo, bro, you should put out some music. Or you should put out an EP. I think he should. Yeah, no, I, I think do. it'll be good. I think it'll be fire, man. Mm-hmm. Nah, this is good, bro. I this is this is good. Yeah. I appreciate you for pulling Nah, I appreciate you. For real, man. Uh, anything you got the project you pushing? Yeah, so to... the project. Sorry. <laughs> the name of the album is Peerless. It's dropping later this month, hopefully. If not, April. You know what I'm saying? I don't have a date on it, but it's coming soon. I'm gonna just say that. Like Peerless coming soon. Uh, Scared Money featuring Kevin Durant out right now. Make sure y'all stream that, uh, favorite it, add it to your playlist, download it, whatever you do, but just play it to death. You know what I'm saying? The video is out also. Make sure y'all subscribe to the channels. You know what I'm saying? Subscribe on Spotify, Apple Music, YouTube, of course. You gonna uh, start posting more, bro? Yeah, I'm gonna start posting more. Don't sit me and lie. I am. Right. I am. Okay. St- <laughs> you gonna do? A, we gonna do a collab post? Yeah. All right. I got you. I got you. <laughs> You're but, a man of your word. No, I, I got you, motherfucker. All right, my, my word God, my on God. camera. All right. But Instagram, um, Twitter, at Stally. Follow me on TikTok. I'm trying to get my TikTok on. I ain't doing no dancing on there, but I'm trying to get my TikTok up. It's Stally BCG. Stally, guys. I, I appreciate you, my nigga. Uh, J Hill. J Hill Podcast. This is great. It's a wrap. We out.